Hi, I'm Anthony Fisher for Reason TV, and I'm here with Jessica Blank and Eric Jensen, the authors of the play The Exonerated, which is currently being staged at the Culture Project in Manhattan. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. us. It's been 10 years since the first staging of the play, and there's been a TV movie produced. Uh, what do you think the cultural impact of the play has been? We're both actors, but we were both interested in documentary theater. And we got the idea to travel around the country, interview exonerated death row inmates, and make a documentary play out of the transcripts. When we first started working on the play, the idea of wrongful conviction and the fact that it happens was just entering the zeitgeist for the first time. And also the death penalty was in the news because George Bush was running for president for the first time and had overseen more executions under his watch as governor than all of the other governors in all of the states in the United States combined since the reinstatement of the death penalty in the early 70s. It was actually just the beginning of a national conversation about the issue and the play incredibly became a part of that conversation. It was performed for Governor Ryan in Illinois right before he left office as part of his decision making process about whether he was going to commute the sentences of everyone on death row to life in prison. It's uh, recently been reported that exonerees receive almost no support from the state after being released which is in stark contrast to people who've actually committed the crimes they've served time for. Wow, you've really done your research. <laughs> how, uh, how is the experience for some of the people that are depicted in your play upon being released? It depends on case to case. You know, um, some people, even after they're exonerated, there's still a stigma that hangs over them. Absolutely. And people are uninformed or uneducated about the case or the issue or only have a tangential idea of what actually went on. There's a suspicion that hangs over them. And of all the things that are traumatic when you get out, that's probably one of the most traumatic. That's particularly distinct in small towns, we found, when we were doing our research and interviewing people. People who were convicted within a small community and then went back into that community upon their release because that's where their family was and that's where their support network was. I think some those people are some of the folks that struggle the most because there's just a level of suspicion that never goes away and everybody knows each other and people, you know. And actually it's interesting, in, uh, in the African American community, it's sort of an open arms situation. People are really welcome back in. In the Caucasian community, not so much because I don't think wrongful conviction is a, is a daily part of life in that community. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what the specific involvement of the Innocence Project is with the play? Oh my God. The Innocence Project <laughs> have been incredible supporters of the play almost since the very beginning. They put us in touch with several exonerees and a portion of the proceeds from the box office goes to support them because we want to give back with this work. They've given so much to us and they do such extraordinary work for the wrongfully convicted. This play is neither left wing nor right wing. Our, we don't have an agenda. Our job is to stay out of the way and let, just let the people tell their stories for themselves mm -hmm. really. So anyway, when the pro-death penalty attack machine sort of uh, came after us. The Innocence Project was right there coming to our defense and walking us through how to deal with stuff like that. They deal with that on a daily basis. People are trying to suck you into an ideological debate here. You're actually just talking about the facts. Here's how you get the conversation back on track, which was extraordinarily valuable because that's what we're trying to do here is keep the, keep the conversation on track about, look, this happens. And it doesn't matter It doesn't matter if you're on the right side of things or if you're pro or you're anti. Nobody, wants, right. nobody wants innocent people to be put to death. That's right. We have the extraordinary gift in this country of a constitution that lays out a criminal justice system that if it were to operate the way it's laid out on paper would be extraordinary. Unfortunately, a lot of Americans don't know there is in many cases a vast gap between how it's meant to operate and how it actually does because of human error, because of systemic flaws. We all probably can get on the same page no matter what our political orientation about the fact that it's important to close that gap and get things working the way they're supposed to according to the blueprint that we have. Thanks so much Jessica Blank and Eric Jensen, authors of The Exonerated, which is currently being staged at the Culture Project in Manhattan. For Reason TV, I'm Anthony Fisher.